All right, Miles Lucas, what's going on, man? Oh, man. Glad uh, we finally got to do this. About time. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're coming off another seminar. Um, this one was a little bit different than uh, how you normally do it, and this was kind of like in the corporate setting, right? So yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about how that experience was for you. Man, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun because everybody is so reserved during the day, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I do a bit of screaming in my seminar, right? You do? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, getting everybody together and scream. And uh, and I, that's part of the that's part of the fun. I think anything mm -hmm. we any silly thing we can do makes chemical changes in our body, and uh, that happened today. And I think that were that was some of the people's favorite part was the end, and you, you do a big Wolverine scream and uh, get that visceral uh, chemical release. So uh, it, it turned out better than uh, than I expected. Yeah, and you know, I just realized that we might have uh, fast forward a little bit, so I want to backtrack. Okay. So people who aren't kind of familiar with what you do. Just give me a little kind of a you know brief explanation of what you're doing right now and kind of what your goal is and kind of the process that led you up to here as well. Okay, so teaching the Wim Hof method mm -hmm. uh, in as many different capacities as possible. Right now, I do a full Wim Hof fundamentals. The Wim Hof method is what? Oh, the Wim Hof method mm -hmm. is uh, uh, a breathing, cold exposure, and mindset uh, method okay. that allows you to control your adrenaline. Cool, amazing. You mm -hmm. control your adrenaline. Man, you can control uh, so many aspects of your life that uh, it, you really leads you down an uh, interesting path, which it has to me. Yeah, so the, the aspects of your life on these things, on being able to control adrenaline, and, you know, like, I'm interested in what that has affected you and your own personal life, and then, you know, like, as a catalyst to that, like, what eventually led to you wanting to share the experience and teach people what you learned? For sure. Well, controlling your adrenaline does two crazy interesting things to me first being uh, anxiety if you have any anxiety you can bring you you can use adrenaline control to either bring your anxiety up or bring it down so by practicing instead of just sitting with stress related anxiety sort of at one level you can practice bringing it up higher and you can practice bringing it down from uh, from that high level mm -hmm. so that builds your control and, uh, and now you don't have to sit at this level of anxiety anymore. You know what it takes because of practice about how to bring it down. And so what in, you know, like what specific examples of these, um, you know, of having anxiety kind of like led you to like seek out this method? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and, and getting nervous all the time for competitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I would do a few rounds of the Wim Hof method, the nerves seemed to completely disappear. Mm -hmm. So no butterflies in my stomach, uh, you know, dry mouth and, and loss of strength and, and loss of mental clarity. When you're out there and you have an adrenaline dump, you, you can't think straight anymore. And uh, your, your, your decision-making process slows down. Yeah. So you can eliminate all of that. Even, and that's something that I did all the time. It was jujitsu, and I would still get that. And uh, so you can use the Wim Hof method to bring your adrenaline to a place where you don't get that anxiety anymore. It, it curbs all the anxious symptoms. And uh, not only to the stuff that you're used to doing, but even stuff you've never done before. Mm -hmm. You can get this sort of flow state clarity. And uh, man, that's applicable for everything. Yeah, how long have you been doing jiu-jitsu? 20 years. 20 years, okay, and yeah. you are, what is your rank? <laughs> I'm a black belt, sir. Okay. Yes. And uh, you also are competing professionally now as well, too, right? I, I've had my I've had three professional matches so far. Cool. And, uh, and I'll continue to do it. I mean, I, mm. I do it for just for fun and as a challenge. Actually, when I started controlling my nerves, I, I, I've sought out challenges to to make sure this works because it surprises me every time. Yeah, you know, and I've so I've heard the story already, man. But yeah. I got to get you to tell it again because it always it makes me laugh every time I hear it. <laughs> yeah. And so this was a. Uh, you were uh, getting ready, competing, getting ready to compete, right? In That's one right. of your professional events. And uh -huh. so you were trying to like test this out and you were trying to put it on the line. So tell me what you did to, to kind of put your money where your mouth is. Right. What's the, uh, the Rocky moment? Yes. When he's, uh, when he's training up in the hills and, he, and he's tossing around uh, rocks and bags and stuff. I had to think of something. What was I going to do in order to really prepare for my first, that was my first uh, professional event. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I knew the Wim Hof Method got me. It controlled my anxiety, but I didn't know if I could do it when it counted. So I, I go to the busiest mall, and, uh, and I sit down right in the middle of the walkway, one of the busiest walkways, mm -hmm. and it takes me three or four rounds 
it takes me, sorry, it takes me five or six rounds to really get in a parasympathetic state. Yeah. And, uh, which five or six rounds was like what, probably like 15, 20 minutes? No, 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. It okay. was about 45 minutes I was there. Wow. And, uh, and I'm sitting there just in a comfortable position mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and doing intense breathing and breath holds and watching people. At first I had to do it with my eyes closed because it was embarrassing. Yeah. But then uh, I did it with my <laughs> eyes open. And I'm just looking at people, seas of people coming towards me and having to walk around me. And, uh, and they can't believe what I'm doing. I can't believe what I'm doing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, it took me a little bit longer to get to a comfortable state, but, uh, but I did it. But after about 45 minutes, mm -hmm. I got in this blissful, relaxed state that you can get yourself in. And, uh, and people are looking at me, and I'm, I stopped caring about 30 <laughs> minutes in, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm here, and I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, every time I hear you tell that story, it, like, it still gives me anxiety. You know, like, not <laughs> even it? knowing that, like, any, it's anything that I have to do, or just, like, but really? just knowing that, yeah, Somebody's hell yeah. Doing that? Kidding, yeah. Like, dude, going in, like, sitting in the middle of a mall and just, like, letting a thousand people, like, yeah. judge you for whatever psycho they think you are, you know, yeah. like, at this point, and... But, and then, again, how that must have been such a win or such a victory for you to be able to get into that state, you know, like, in that circumstance, right? Yeah, now it's a, now it's a, a, a sharpened knife mm -hmm. that I have on I me. Mean, now it's a tool, a weapon that I can use, like, oh, my God, I can do this anywhere. I purposely picked a place where it would be particularly awkward. I thought about what a cool place to do it, like, oh, you could do it in Times Square, you could do it around a lot of people, but they would ignore you. Yeah. I made it so that these people will not ignore me, and they will hate They will hate that I'm doing this. I yeah. knew I looked like an asshole. I mean, that's... You might have made some money out in Times Square <laughs> doing it, though, but... <laughs> Put a jar out. Mm -hmm. I'll breathe for you. Um, but but it worked, and, uh, and, and it, again, it surprises me every time when it works. Yeah. But now it so works. how long were you how long were you breathing like at the point on when you went into the mall you know and kind of like put, oh how long have you been doing yeah, it? How long I've been, been doing, doing it since it 2015 I've been doing it since wow. Rogan's first podcast but what when, when was it when you did it how long were you doing it oh uh, so that was uh, two years ago so okay so I've two been years doing it for in several two yeah, yeah two well, years in is when you kind of like felt you felt comfortable enough to like get out there and like yeah. you know really put yourself outside of the comfort zone yeah so you know we could. You know, almost like bookmark that as like a climac climatic mm. point. Climatic? Climatic. Climatic. Climax. Climax. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bookmark that as a, as a point, <laughs> yeah. you know, of like uh, kind of like leveling up, so to say. But tell yeah, me a little bit about sure. like the beginning part about it, you know, and like just getting into it, mm -hmm. you know, and like having to like experiment and like work through certain things. You plateau, right, and have to like switch it up. You know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, maybe the struggles that you had in the beginning. Well, I mean, I'm pretty unique for the fact that uh, I'm unique because my lung capacity is so much lower than everybody else's. I mean, I'm at the, like the, the I'm in the one percent of like the worst lung capacity. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's just been massively effective for me, and it was since the very beginning. So six, I did it the moment I learned it. I did it almost on a daily basis for six months, but I never did the cold exposure. That that part seemed absurd to me. Mm -hmm. It was like I moved to California to live in the sun. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and so that didn't even seem interesting. But then after getting better, uh, I started to sweat when I would do the breathing for mm -hmm. no reason. I thought I, I added the breathing routine with uh, an exercise routine, so I thought I was sweating from the exercise for a long time. And then I realized that it might. I'm like, is this just the breathing? So I cut out the exercise, just did the breathing. Yes, I was sweating from the breathing. Wow. And then uh, I started. I'm like, is this why these guys are doing this this cold stuff? And so I started with like a. I would do the breathing and do a cold shower. And I'm like, well, that wasn't even that hard. Mm -hmm. And then, and then like a cold bath. I'm like, this, this is it. This is, I, I figured, I'd finally learned. It takes me a long time. Nobody ever accused me of being, uh, uh, learning things quickly. I can relate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, uh, so it took me six months to believe that this would work for the cold. And as soon as it did, you know, I started with my first cold ice bath at yeah. home. And, and then I got it. I'm like, oh my God, this, this, it hurts at first. You step mm -hmm. in. And you are being, you're in the gates of hell being stabbed. I mean, it's brutal. Yeah. But then in less than a minute, you can cut out the, the feeling of uh, pain. It's, it's a nice body disassociative feeling, you know. Yeah. You can set the, the, the pain to the side and sort of exist in this space. And uh, you don't feel it anymore. And you feel incredibly powerful. You know, and you never, like, as many ice baths as you do, you never, like, get used to it, like, when you first get in, right? It sucks I don't think every so. time, yeah. right? But this, yeah. that's the point, right, is that it sucks when you first get in, and then, like, you regulate yourself, like, through breathing, and, 
you're able to regulate and then you yeah. kind of get into like that flow state or you get into the groove and then how important is that now applying into like everyday life circumstances you know like having that confidence to be able to like navigate being uncomfortable and yeah. then actually being comfortable being uncomfortable that's what it is so mm -hmm. i think that if you practiced every day say you did it twice a day you could get to the point i think where it wouldn't it wouldn't bother you as much mm -hmm. but then you're not growing from it anymore mm -hmm. then it's not it's not serving its purpose right so that's what it is for sure that practice of being comfortable outside of your comfort zone knowing that like you have uh, physical control to be able to bring your anxiety down to control your body temperature to control yeah. anything control your fitness level sort of um, you know immediately is uh, I think those three things allow you to now okay I'm going into an uncomfortable position whatever it is mm -hmm. and uh, and now I have some tools to to seek go far outside of the into this discomfort and uh, and some tools to rely on to navigate it yeah, and so you've already mentioned before and like on how it's helped you get ready for like your pro tournaments and yeah. your competitions and things like that. And obviously we just talked about, you know, like the having to navigate the shittiness of a of an ice bath. Mm -hmm. But like tell me like what do you think is like the the area in your life like outside of, you know, like competing in jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. or like some of these extreme cases where you found the breeding has been beneficial to you? Yeah. Um, well, I was giving presentations. I would have to travel mm -hmm. uh, a bit. Uh, I was a creative director at an ad agency, and I would have to travel and give presentations, sometimes in uh, pretty foreign places. I was in London and Manchester and in Ireland, a few places, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you, get, uh, you don't get enough sleep. So in one way, the breathing certainly helps you when you don't have enough sleep. You can, you can get energy through that. And then I would get nervous giving these presentations. Yeah. So I could, again, use it in the beginning before I have to present and, uh, and relieve the nerves from that. So on top of all that, I'm homeschooling my kids, and I'm just busy all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, to gain that peace of mind in the smallest time frame that you have available is uh, again massively powerful, and can really, you know, you go down the list of the benefits, and I've challenged people to to tell me who would this, who would the breathing methods not work for. Mm -hmm. what, who who are these not good for? Right, and there it's literally nobody. Yeah, I mean we all we all do it, and so to improve this thing that we all do that can change your physiology in two minutes is uh, you know absolutely applicable for the world. You know, and, it, and you had talked about how there isn't anybody that this wouldn't be good for, right? And so yeah. that brought up a point to me because, um, you know, like there's concepts you teach, right? Where like you're going to you're gonna teach certain methods that are like the structure of like just the philosophy. Mm. But then every time, at least in my own experience, you know, and I'm sure you'll validate this, is that, you know, you have to kind of figure out your own way, right? Figure out your own rhythms, figure out, you know, like, yeah. oh, this method works well for trying to increase energy and this works well mm -hmm. for maybe trying to sleep or kind of like to calm down. So like how, you know, valuable is that for each person to kind of like step in and have to go through their own journey and finding themselves? Yeah, well, this? that's what we say. We, mm -hmm. we kick the door open for you yeah. and it's up to you where to go. But that's what, why uh, the Wim Hof method is so awesome and powerful to me is that there he's not giving you the steps there you're not giving you the steps to to do these things what he's going to give you is the principles that allow you to create your own steps essentially to create your own recipe mm -hmm. so you've there's a lot of other practices i think that the practice is somebody else's recipe and it may not be good for you and uh and they're very and people are very precise about especially uh, other breathing programs are very precise about what they think needs to be done yeah but they don't always work for everybody right and so this is like no there is no this isn't our recipe this is the principles these core principles use these principles and create your own recipe right and 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 that's what i've learned after becoming a black belt in jiu-jitsu that's what it, the, was the most powerful thing for me in jiu-jitsu was all of a sudden all the steps that i had learned well, you could merge those into uh, one or two simple principles, a thousand steps, you could merge them into a couple principles mm -hmm. and just follow the principles and, and the rest is uh, ad-libbing right. or, or, you know, yeah. Yeah, and that was cool. I'm glad you brought that up too um, about, you know, like making your own recipe and kind of integrating your own things and how, you know, there's other breathing techniques and some people say like, oh, that's, you're not supposed to do this, you're yeah. supposed to do that. And so I know like you are now doing your own seminars like we had kind of opened up with and mm -hmm. uh, you are starting to integrate your own recipe mm -hmm. into that. 
And tell me a little bit about that because you're kind of mixing and matching, right? Some yeah. different techniques and methods as well. Yeah, and, and I got it, you know, the majority of it's from Wim Hof stuff. Right. And then, and I tell people that too. I'm like, hey, these are the core principles that uh, are the Wim Hof method. And then mm -hmm. this is my flavor that yeah. I put on top of it. And some of these things I like, and, and if you like them. And then, but I, I really emphasize the fact that uh, this is a recipe that I like and that you guys might like too, but this isn't, you don't have to do it this way. You know, I, I would encourage you to do it different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I think that's what resonates the most with people. So my two, I really only have two other seminars other than the Wim Hof stuff, which is uh, I have Breathing for Jiu-Jitsu, okay. which makes sense because mm -hmm. I've done Jiu-Jitsu a long time and I've found how amazing it can help. And then uh, Breathing for Professional Growth. Okay. So uh, again, I was a creative director for 10 years. So yeah. uh, learning how to control your nerves for presentations and, uh, and energy in the middle of the day, that's one of my favorite ones because if some, I, I wish I would have learned what to do at three o'clock when you, you put something on your screen and prop your, your chin up and, and then have a little nap while everyone else thought you were looking at your screen, you know? Yeah. Because you just can't help it at three o'clock. If you eat a, a, you know, a pizza for lunch, you are going to be tired. That's a wrap, son. Yeah, it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're going to have to do a lot of breathing to work through that one. <laughs> well, we, we can. Yeah, <laughs> it works. True. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's the personal growth one. That's big. And, you know, in my own experience as well, like I've had, um, I guess, success or breakthroughs with that because I, you know, what do you do? for me, what do I do? What do you do with it? Yeah. Well, like for me, like, like I use it to like it more of, I guess, like a mental health thing and to like mitigate anxiety. So like for yeah, me, like the breathing sure. really helps me to like regulate emotion. You know, like if I'm like really worked up about something, like doing like a set of breathing helps me ground and I can kind of like yeah. recenter because you have like we talked about everyone has their own rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. So like maybe like you just like you're kind of in a state of crisis we'll just say for whatever reason right okay. and you're like all charged up and then by getting you know by just sitting down and taking a break and kind of like recentering with yourself and getting back into your routine it kind of like it naturally like regulates your body back yeah. to like what its default setting would be and so like i've used that before you know if i have like class presentations and things coming up where i would normally have you know a lot of anxiety for public speaking mm -hmm. and uh you know it just really helps me to kind of get to like that baseline level that you would want you know like as far as being a regulated like person totally the baseline that's mm -hmm. why they used to throw people in in, in mental hospitals the people that are having a psychotic episode they throw them in an ice bath because yeah. you, mm -hmm. it, it resets your brain and, and it will snap you out of a psychotic episode. Yeah. And the, there's good research to back it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, I was reminded just the other day a, a story with my son. So uh, we were talking about, he was upset about something. He's, uh, he's 11 and he was pretty upset about something. And there's a weird residual effect to emotions. And I learned about this uh, when I was babysitting another friend's kid who was about eight years old. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I ever uh, understood this. Okay. But what happened was he had a, he liked dinosaur chicken, the dinosaur chicken out of the oven, right? Who doesn't? It's, uh, they're delicious. <laughs> I like hot sauce on mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I made the dinosaur chicken, and then I squeezed a bunch of ketchup on the side and yeah. hand him the plate. And, uh, and he didn't want ketchup on it. And he, they warned me that he gets angry about stuff. Okay. And so I knew to be a little bit on edge and to be ready for stuff with him. Okay. So he starts he starts getting red. He starts mm -hmm. fuming about the ketchup. Literally in a few moments. He's, That's on his plate, yes. not on the chicken. Right? It's not on the chicken. Okay. It's on the plate okay. next to the chicken. And so immediately I see that he's upset. Mm -hmm. I grab the plate. I have a new plate. I, I like a magician, <laughs> pull the, uh, the chicken, just land on the next plate, empty plate. Mm -hmm. And then I sit there and look at him. And and he's he he knows what happened. He knows he was only mad about the ketchup. At least that's what he told me. Right. But he can't not be mad yet. So it took he him a while. Okay, yeah. He had mm -hmm. a residual emotional effect. He's yeah. like, ooh, whoo. He's like, he's looking at me. He's looking at the chicken. And he's, I can tell in his face, he's like, I know that I shouldn't be mad right now, but I'm still angry because of the, what happened earlier, you yeah. know, a few minutes earlier. But uh, that was a lesson to me. And I talked about that with my son because he was still upset. But I'm connected yeah. to the breathing because I'm missing that part. Um, no, I, I, so I'm just sharing the story because there's w what I'm realizing mm -hmm. and what I remember like, recently was that residual emotional uh, response that we have. You yeah. can't just switch emotions on and off. So you need uh, something to okay. do it. You could sit there and wait 
for the emotions to sort of to, to hack subside. the process basically yeah. so you have a tool to hack the process I rather than having the to process. fucking sit there and stare at your plate that you <laughs> yeah. knew that did have ketchup on it but no longer has ketchup yes. but in your mind it still has ketchup it's, it's, and you're like fuck that plate okay so and, mad. but yes. hack the system yeah. i got you i'm following yeah. you yeah it's pretty neat though it's, yeah. i think it's really important that we recognize too that that's not how emotions work like even though you yeah. shouldn't be mad about something man if you were super mad about it you can't just it doesn't just go away yeah i mean and you know like in my own personal life again um you know like when i've just we'll, we'll call it another state of crisis right like that the kid with the ketchup on his plate that's a state of crisis you know? <laughs> it was like for him, adults, it was. adults we have our own you know states of crisis and so like Instead of like what I would do normally, you know, like to, you know, self soothe or cope with that through whatever, you know, drugs, alcohol, anything you can think of. Those now, things work know. great. They do. You know, they do. Yes, have their place, don't they? Um, but, you know, it's just, it's another tool that you can add. So, you know, like you have, you know, yeah. healthier options. It's a healthier tool. Just, it's a healthier tool and it's quite available, isn't it? There isn't, at least right now, there isn't, um, uh, we're not hurting for oxygen, right? Get high on your own supply. Yeah. So you also do, okay, so you also do the breathing for jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah. So just tell me a little bit, just kind of like briefly about like what your approach is yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, that's super important. We've already talked about how it can control anxiety, and that's awesome. Right. Um, good breathing mechanics and, and to some sort of conscious breathing while you're rolling is, mm-hmm. is massive, and none of us do it. We're very few people do it. Yeah. And so the Wim Hof let, method led me to learn better breathing mechanics and a few different breathing patterns that you can use while you roll, and so we get together and then we get into different situations. This knee on stomach is a tough one. You're on the bottom. Somebody's got a knee on your stomach, pushing you in the stomach, and it's hard to breathe. But uh, there's, there's some mechanics you can use to keep your breath in, in those situations. And then uh, to create a, a reserve. So you, you build up a bunch of oxygen and you create a reserve and you hold on to it. You can re- hold on to a reserve of energy. And it's what Wim uses to get up mountains. And it's what we use to get up mountains. And, uh, and you know, you can hold your breath for longer and you can exercise longer while holding your breath or exercise longer while uh, not having to breathe as much. Yeah. So, uh, so we go over that. For those of you who are um, unfamiliar with Wim Hof, he hikes, did he do Everest? I think he did to the death zone, I think. Yeah, he did Everest, gnarly. Everest to the death zone <laughs> and just board shorts, right? Yeah. Did he have, even have shoes on? I'm not on? sure if you, sometimes he doesn't wear shoes. So okay, I'm not sure. well, he fucking hikes mountains and shit, <laughs> right? Like, in just board shorts without shoes. So, like, look Dang. it up and, to get uh, more information. But, That's real. Yeah, and so if, you know, like, it doesn't have to just be with jiu-jitsu either, right? I mean, like, these are, like, reserves you can do for, like, lifting weights, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, not everyone is out there, like, competing in MMA and stuff like yeah. that. But it is still very applicable to, you know, it's very realistic for the average person, right? And so you can do these, like, yeah. breath patterns, like, for whatever physical activity that you are doing. Totally. And I think you're going to see it. I think a, a bit of a... We've ignored breath work for a long time, mm-hmm. just as a society. And, uh, and I think we're seeing that the tide's going to change. And I think, like, why uh, uh, sprinters aren't doing, you know, a build-up, aren't creating that mm-hmm. reserve right there before the, the match is, is beyond me, why yeah. they're not doing that. And, uh, or, or other uh, sprinting-style athletics, why they're not. Uh, I have friends that do some powerlifting. Mm-hmm. They, they've done it for their powerlifting. It's been uh, phenomenal for them. And, uh, and I think we're going to see that change happen pretty rapidly coming up. So explain a little bit, uh, like, when you're doing... Like the the when you do push ups, it's a good way to kind of like explain what you're talking about as far as like the breath reserve and like mm. what you can actually do physically, yeah. not even breathing, right? Once you build that up and holding your breath, yeah. So can you kind of just briefly explain that? Well, it takes energy to breathe, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're uh, if you can hold your breath, mm-hmm. oh, Hi. Right. So if you can not breathe, mm-hmm. you can actually use uh, you can use that energy for the activity. So that's one of the things we do is we do a round of breathing and then we see how many push-ups that you can do. And almost uh, 100% of the people do more push-ups than they thought they could, than they thought they could while they were breathing. Yeah. Because they created that reserve. And, uh, and it's phenomenal. I mean, people are, are so floored by that. They, they can do more push-ups without breathing, but uh, that's, uh, that's only one of the part of the process. One of the mechanisms is the, yeah. the fact that uh, they, don't have to bre- they don't have to waste the energy breathing. But it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon that, uh, yeah. And I think one of the, the main, like, principles that the Wim Hof Method is trying to, you know, get across to people is that we're just scratching the surface on human potential, right? Oh and, like, God. what, yeah. you know, like, humans are really capable of and what we've been told is true. Yeah. That, you know, 
isn't, right? It's true. And uh, we must change the science books. So staying with that, we got the big seminar going on tomorrow, the actual yeah. Wim Hof seminar that yeah. you will be attending as an instructor. Tell me a little bit about, you know, like what that details, what you're excited about, For you know, sure. and, you know, maybe even like what you can learn new each time. Yeah. Well, you'll be there too. I will be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thousand people, yeah. 10 ice baths, mm-hmm. 10 people in a bath. Uh, it's going to be incredible, you know, just to get that, that energy going is, uh, is a pretty unique thing. Yeah. I think people... Res- it resonates with people a little bit different, but um, you know, you get a thousand people in a room, heavy breathing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some tides are, are turning. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of energy being pushed around. Huh? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's just it. It's just it's just going to be such a big group, and, and the residual effect from that is going to you know be all over the Bay Area. You yeah. know, a thousand people are now going to spread spread the the message around, and it just doesn't stop. It's like. I mean, it changed my life and changed the course of my career and everything. Right. And, and it's almost like when you learn this stuff, you sort of figure out what's important. Wim Hof says, uh, you know, happiness, strength, and health, and then the rest is bullshit. And, uh, and I, I can't, it's hard to disagree with him. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, a lot well, of people cool, man. Are tell me, um, tell people how they can find you if they want to, like, learn more about the seminars and things that you've got going on. Yeah, yeah for sure. So uh, breath.fitness, uh, not.com breath.fitness mm-hmm. and uh, that has all, all my seminars uh, I'm up and down California uh, for most of them but then uh, you know we'll, we'll be doing some in, in Germany and Ireland and uh, when the time comes so super excited about that and uh, Big Mike's gonna be here with me mm-hmm. uh, filming and doing cool stuff and breathing deeply <laughs> and uh, so what's your Instagram and what's yeah. your uh, YouTube channel as well too yeah for sure so everything mm-hmm. is breath fitness oh, okay so it should be super easy to find a uh, breath.fitness on Instagram uh, uh, YouTube slash Breath Fitness, and uh, I'll be putting out more YouTube videos shortly, and we do some fun things on there. Some uh, I've met with Hickson Gracie and talked with Hickson Gracie about the Wim Hof method, and and he's uh, although he disagrees with the the, the process, mm-hmm. uh, you know he's super respectful to Wim, and, uh, and and has had similar benefits with breath work, so so that's pretty neat to combine all that stuff, and uh, yeah, come check out the seminars. Yeah, so if you are interested in learning more about breath work and just, you know, kind of maybe want to level up some of the things you're doing in your own personal life, look up Wim Hof. That's W-I-M-H-O-F, two words. There's tons and tons of things out there on him. And look up my boy, Miles Lucas. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for doing this. Appreciate your time.